Well, I'm with Kathleen Nielsen, who's Director of Women's Initiatives at the Gospel Coalition. Uh, Kathleen, it's been great to have you with us at the Leaders' Conference this week. Thank you for being with us. No, it's been a pleasure to be with you. Good. Uh, first of all, let me start by saying FIC has a purpose statement on women in ministry, mm -hmm. which says that our churches won't have uh, women pastor elders. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to that as a woman working for the Gospel Coalition? Well, we have a similar statement, so I'm fully in accord and think it's actually extremely beneficial to have a statement that clarifies what we believe to be Scripture's clear teaching um, about the equal value of men and women in creation and redemption, and yet distinction in roles as God has defined it throughout His Word. So to get that clear is a really helpful starting point. And can women thrive in that model in your experience? Well, doesn't it make sense that if God set that up as the order that he um, ordains and offers to us in his word, commands to us in his word, that it would be uh, the, the uh, structure in which we will most thrive. And indeed, I believe that to be the case, um, that when we embrace that order, not sort of grudgingly accept it and say, okay, I can live with that, I wish it were otherwise, um, but actually embrace it and work well within it that we thrive most beautifully. Where do you see churches uh, doing this well? Where do I see yeah, churches doing yeah. this well? well? Give us examples of where churches do it well, not necessarily geographically, but, but where you've seen it embraced well by churches. Yes. The churches where I see the most healthy complementarian ministry going on are churches in which um, there is embraced ministry by women, but not ministry that's sort of operating independently or in a separate category, but ministry among women that is actually shepherded by the pastors and elders of the church and ministry that is actually integrated with the mission of the church um, so that women's ministry isn't really out for just the good of women. Women's ministry, when it works within this context of pastoral leadership, is for the good of the church um, benefits the church in amazing ways and um, obviously is ultimately for the glory of Jesus. What might this ministry you've talked about look like in our churches, mm -hmm. Kathleen? It will certainly look like teaching. That's one thing it will look like. Titus 2 is very clear that the older women are to teach the younger women and certainly not just principles and good moral sort of behavior and good works. Yes, all that, but all that even as it's taught in Titus, grows out of the gospel, grows out of good doctrine, grows out of the word of God. So it really is a, a speaking to each other the word, learning how to articulate the word to each other, helping each other learn how to pass on the teaching of scripture one generation to the next. Um, the modeling of that from one woman to another is a beautiful thing and a treasured thing. It's something a man cannot do, model for a woman. Um, how to articulate um, godly womanhood according to the word. Women do that for each other and um, grow generation by generation as a result. So where would you encourage our churches within FIC to start in terms of developing women's ministry if it's not perhaps something mm -hmm. they, they've thought through yet? Mm -hmm. I am encouraged to have many conversations here about the training of women in the word. Uh, if we're going to have substantive word work among the women, which we need to have, that means logically that we do need to train leaders among the women to be able to teach, to be able to do this kind of passing on. That training can happen in a number of ways. Um, it is a wonderful thing when pastors and elders take the lead and say, we want to help this training to happen. Either they'll set up a course within the church or they'll send perhaps a, a small group of women to another venue where they can attend a workshop perhaps and study expositional uh, work in the scriptures um, so that as women are trained, um, then they are better able to do that job of word work and to pass it on to each other. So I would say training is crucial. And what about people who are listening to this thinking, yeah, I, I know I'm a complementarian, mm -hmm. I know that we, we have teaching on, on this from, from the scriptures, I just don't know how it works out in, in practice. Mm -hmm. what, what advice would you give them to sort of take that first step where it might seem they might be nervous or mm -hmm. their congregations might be nervous? Mm -hmm. what, 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 what advice mm -hmm. would you give? Mm -hmm. 
it's, it's really helpful to start within a congregation that hasn't had any work like this going on, to start with one-to-one -one Bible reading. I know many people over here do that and there are many uh, helps that, uh, that encourage us and tell us how to do that. Uh, that's kind of a non-threatening way to start, one-to-one. -one, let's open the Bible together and help sort of train each other as we ask questions about the word. If two women do that, and then those women do that with two other women, there grows a hunger, there grows an excitement. I mean, if what we believe about the word is true, that it is living and active, that it does pierce hearts, um, then not all women will respond. Some will go away, but many women will taste and become more and more hungry and uh, want to learn how to dig in better and more deeply. And it can grow from the smallest start. Fantastic. Yeah. Anything else you would say to our churches that they want to consider mm -hmm. about this type of role before, yeah. you, before you leave us and, and jet off to Dubai? I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I must say I'm encouraged by conversations with pastors here who are enthusiastic about fostering good, strong women's ministry within the clear context of complementarianism. There is, when you get that context clear, there's a kind of abandon and a kind of freedom to encourage women's gifts. And um, I would say be encouraged, and I also would say um, be encouraged by these pastors who are evidently desiring to take the lead and to help nurture and foster this. And if complementarianism is um, a good reading of scripture, which I believe it is, then that is the way it needs to happen through the leadership uh, of the church and coordinated with the whole ministry of a church congregation. Thank you, Kathy, that's really helpful. Yeah.